I'm totally honored to be the speaker this morning. Uh, Donna called me several months ago, and I said, Donna, this is la you know Labor Day weekend. My spa is busy, and then as soon as she said one or two more words, I cannot tell you. But I actually started crying <laughs> because I go back with Donna to before the first breakfast here and I thought to myself, if there's a day to give up work for the neighborhood group, I got to do it. So I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed this is my first breakfast. Many of you I know, many of you I don't. Uh, but I'm honored to be here. And so, why did we all come today? Why did we all come here? Who was here for the first breakfast? Raise your hand. Golly, that's awesome. Okay, here, who was here for the second breakfast? All right, and who's here today? Well, perhaps you came to uh, meet friends. That's why Donna started the neighborhood group. Hi, my friend. I was here too. <laughs> Perhaps you came to the neighborhood breakfast to, to learn more about the town. Perhaps to get help from the town. Any number of reasons. It was in 2003 my wife and I moved to Desert Hot Springs. Actually, this very weekend, uh, we closed escrow on the Kismet Lodge building over there on Mountain View Freeway. Yay. And uh, we decided to uh, put our life savings into starting a mineral water spa here in our town. And we have zero regrets after 14 years. I think the theme for the neighborhood group has been, be the change you want to see. And that kind of mirrors uh, our arrival, Judy and I's arrival to town. Uh, we acquired the Kismet Lodge building and we immediately acquired the neighborhood that surrounded it. And by that I mean we had a house next to our spa that had a German Shepherd tied out in the front and a German Shepherd tied out in the back. What went on in the house I do not know, but I do know what went on during the day. The dog slept, and at night, the dogs barked. <laughs> so, as a business owner, I said, who's in charge of barking dogs in the town? And I was told, the Public Safety Commission. And as it turns out, um, I was appointed to the Public Safety Commission, where I served the City of Desert Hot Springs for 11 years. Uh, learned a lot about the inner workings of the city, learned a lot about barking dogs. <laughs> Our Kismet Lodge building was built in 1960, and I wanted to learn more about its history. So that took me to the Sidewander that had a lot of pictures on the wall, but I found none of my hotel. So I heard who's in charge of the history of the town, and it was the Desert Hot Springs Historical Society. So I said, well, I need to go there and check that out. And then as it turns out, uh, I was honored to say, all right, let's create a website. I created a website for them. Uh, then they elected me as president, where I served as president for about seven years. And the Historical Society is invaluable to me, to our town. One day I was at a hotelier meeting and a former city council person who was appointed to the hotelier group came in and said, uh, today we have a new commissioner on the Palm Springs Airport Commission. And we all go, who is that? And he goes, Jeff Bowman. I go, what? <laughs> so for four years, I got to go across the wash to sit in with the guys of the Palm Springs Airport Commission representing our at town. At 8 o'clock in the morning. At 8 o'clock in the morning, thank you. You know all about it. <laughs> former mayor. And uh, so it'd be the change you want to be is the idea. I also served on the Palm Springs Visitors and uh, Convention of Visitors Authority for our town, for the hoteliers, for about six years. Now, why am I saying this? The neighborhood group is comprised of people like me, like you, that care about the city. And all I can say 
is that when we put our heart and soul into the place we live, we do make a difference. And back in uh, 2014, according to uh, Facebook, Donna, two of 22 of 14, started the Desert Hot Springs Neighborhood Group. And I remember she relaying to me that it, she wanted to meet people. She wanted to learn about our town. So she fired it up. And then I think it was when Michael Burke decided to join and uh, spread his love and get more people involved that the snowball downhill started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then Eric joins the team. And uh, along with Donna is responsible, as you all know, for herding the cats that exist on the neighborhood group. The group has now almost 6,800 members. So that's a tremendous amount. And I like on the group, we all have agreed to these rules, for lack of better terms. Be positive, no negativity. Respect other members. We support Desert Hot Springs, and I'm quoting them. If you present a problem, follow through with finding a solution. Seek opinions and advice and be willing to work as a team to be that solution. This page is not for posting a complaint and doing nothing about it. Be the change you want to see. And then it says, respect other members, no profanity, no name calling, no finger pointing, no whining, no belittling, no racial comments, no politics, no provoking others, no upsetting members. No whining. <laughs> it's not my favorite. Yeah, my no whining. And these simple rules are sort of the rules that you learn in kindergarten. But the sad thing is, sometimes we adults don't follow those rules. And so, as a result of these rules that were forged out of the trials that Donna and Eric and the rest of the members of the early days faced, other Facebook groups were created. <laughs> and that's okay. We need the other Facebook groups. We need the other re places where people can do what they want to do. Often, the neighborhood group has been accused of living with rose-colored glasses. <laughs> and only sweetness and nice, you know, unicorns and rainbows. And such accusations are actually a positive trait. <laughs> Who doesn't want sweetness and nice and rainbows and unicorns? And so, those with the, what I call keyboard courage, and I spent years in the computer industry back in the day when the bulletin boards were up before any graphics, before any pictures. And I learned long ago that it's easy to have keyboard courage where you say things that you would never, ever, ever, ever say to another person's face. And I appreciate that the neighborhood group helps those people move along. And then there's a second type of uh, observation I've made when it comes to online or social media. Uh, the neighborhood group is not a place for what I call kerfuffle trolls. A kerfuffle is something that's trying to create a tempest in a teapot. You know, it's trying to create things happening. And they throw these things out uh, expecting to get the emotions and everybody involved. And the point is, it serves no purpose. And so I appreciate that the neighborhood group has done what it has done with the parameters so that the thing, the city, the efforts can move forward. So I asked Donna to give me a list of some of the things that this group of unicorns and rainbows has done. <laughs> first of all, the monthly breakfast that we're participating in my first time here. It's awesome. To my knowledge, you've done at least two art strolls. The efforts of all the people in this room. 
You put on a birthday celebration for the city back in 2015, and I remember sometime we all of a sudden had snow here in the <laughs> desert. You know, and that came from the effort of many people, city council people, staff, the neighborhood group. How many, how many gatherings have been over at Bur Dillon's Roadhouse and Burgers and Beer? I mean, you know, countless ones. Four neighborhood group booklets have been created to promote the city and the businesses of our town. And then, Donna had this idea, how about a person of the week or a person of the month? And it's rather cool when that happens and we get to award and we applaud people that make the difference in our town. How about a holiday parade that didn't exist? A lot of effort from a lot of people went into creating those. And I know as a director for Mission Spring Water District, our district proudly has supported every, every parade. And it's an honor to ride down that uh, Palm Drive and look at the constituents of our town and all the happy faces and the little kids and the joy. Rainbows and unicorns do some pretty good work. <laughs> And then how about the murals? The orca family, I must admit, when I first saw the orcas, I thought, in the desert? You've got to be kidding me. And then I understood more that it's about family, the orca family. And then I thought, why not in the desert? What a place. And then we have our wonderful eagle um, that we see on Palm Drive. And there's, you know, more and more and more and more. The things that have bubbled up from the neighborhood group have changed the face of this town. The things that have bubbled up from the efforts of Donna, Brianna, I mean, I could go to everyone in this room. We've made a difference. Okay, so the neighborhood group has done one thing well, as well as all these other things, and that is the neighborhood group has supported the city. No matter who's in charge, the neighborhood group has been there to hold up the city. Whether it's the staff, our city manager or managers, our chiefs, chiefs of police or chiefs, uh, the neighborhood group has been there to hold them, to help them, police and fire. Well, I haven't given the whole list but I wanted to just share with you some of the things and condense three plus years of hard work of everybody here. And who, by the way, hasn't seen Donna taking hundreds, thousands, yay, tens of thousands of pictures of our city and the events so that others can see that we are more than just a funky little desert town across the wash. Exactly why. <laughs> we are making a difference. Uh, I was chatting with uh, John and Mary at our table this morning about the fact that our town is disrespected by the other cities of this valley. And it's the efforts of everyone in this room to change that can make that change happen in the views of other people. I remember when I went over to the Palm Springs Airport Commission, I literally was looked down upon. When I didn't have a plane, I didn't know how to fly a plane, but I was representing our town. And it took a year of just sitting there, adding a few things from time to time for them to get the respect. I, for me to get the respect of them. And I have to say, we are doing more together in the last decade, and in fact in the last four years, that I have seen in the 14 years I've been in town. So, be the change you want to see, is the theme. Are you wanting more out of life? Are you dissatisfied the way things are? You want to change your life. You want to move ahead. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Well, 
My advice is be the change you want to be. Get moving. Someone, have you ever tried to steer your car while it's parked in the driveway? It doesn't move. In fact, you can hardly turn the wheel. And so it is with our personal lives. God, the universe, whatever higher power, whatever you want to say, the wheels of our life can only change or, or turn while we're moving, when we're moving ahead. And I realize at this point, every, almost everybody in this room gets it because you've volunteered, you've stepped up. If you haven't, do so. Look at the models of the people in this room in the neighborhood group and learn. God has used this lady, I'm gonna be here, to make this happen. She, has said, if it's to be, it's up to me. And here we are. And so to Donna, I want to say thank you. going to say all these things, these nice things about her. We all know that she has some other things that are not so nice, but then again, that's being you. We're all human. We are all that. Come on up. So, Donna, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you've done for our town. And I have a special gift for you that when you look at this, may you smile. May you receive encouragement, and may you realize that rainbows and